Greetings and welcome back to my game talks. Today I'm going to be talking about something a little less run of the mill than I have to date. And of course, by run of the mill, I mean uh, it's lesser, it's less known. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about uh, Obsidian, the company, and a project they're currently working on called Project Eternity, which is in fact a Kickstarter project. And uh, I think it's one of the most important gaming projects anyone's working on in uh, in the RPG, uh, fantasy RPG world. Now, a little background: uh, Kickstarter is a uh, basically a website. Um, people can start whatever project they like, and then ask for donations to follow through with the project. Unfortunately, in the gaming world, uh, the Kickstarter project is probably best known for the professional con artist and fraud, Anita Sarkeesian, who uh, managed to hoodwink thousands of people into donating approximately 150000 USD to her, uh, which she then uh, kind of hoarded until people started complaining a year later, and then then finally worked on her so-called uh, gaming critique series. Well, I don't want to talk about Anita Sarkeesian too much. Needless to say, uh, Kickstarter might be, at least image-wise, in the eyes of... Uh, of good gamers, of, of objective and critical gamers, a bit marred. But I do want to talk about Kickstarter in relationship to gaming. Now, Obsidian Entertainment, you many of you might know, especially the older folks such as myself, they made titles such as uh, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, uh, Torment, fantastic game, Torment, brilliant game, extremely dated but brilliant, Fallout New Vegas, and so on and so forth. They made a lot, and the beginning, the first, I think, Fallout 1 and 2 as well, they made a lot of uh, fantastic role-playing games, traditional role-playing games, uh, back in the day. And for those of you who are in my age bracket or have gone retro, you might remember some of these great games from the uh, late 90s primarily, the Icewind Dale series, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, I used to play pen and paper Dungeons and Dragons when I was younger. Uh, Baldur's Gate. I mean, just epic, epic stuff. Uh, a little dated in some sense today, I mean, but the Infinity Engine was kind of a legend, and um, those of you might know it still. So Obsidian Entertainment um, got together and thought, it was a little, little over a year ago, well... We want to go back to making the old school RPGs, and I, you know, I'm perfectly willing to admit that old school RPGs are not necessarily everyone's uh, cup of tea. You know, it's clear, um, not everyone's thing. But for those of us who who do love them, uh, it was just brilliant news. Now, they wanted to, I guess, circumvent essentially circumvent using a publisher after a lot of thought because publishers inevitably put constraints on on developers. Most importantly, the project they're working on right now is PC exclusive. And of course, that lights up my heart, and it might light up your heart as well as a, a member of the master race. And when you say, well, we want to work on a you know, old school uh, PC exclusive RPG, well, publishers don't necessarily like hearing that. Apparently, they had uh, offered a lot of details as to what uh, what they want to do, and you know, very mat mature themes and topics, and well, um, they probably could have gotten a publishing deal, but they decided to take a different route, specifically the Kickstarter route. So the idea behind, I think this is a brilliant principle in general, between Kickstart and gaming, and I actually, when I was had more money, I donated a little bit to the project. You know, my little part, because uh, I think it was just a good idea, not a lot, but what I could afford, is that game developers are funded by the players, you know, by the buyer base, as opposed to publishers who uh, put constraints on them and uh, and can sometimes hinder them in, in the things that they actually want to put out there into the gaming world. So they started this project about little over a year ago, or at least they po they posted the um, Kickstarter project, and it has been tremendously successful. Um, they're, they, they're first were trying to get a little over a million dollars, and now, this was a year ago, and now they're, they're very close, if not a little over four million. I think it's very close to four million. 
and I mean, they have enough moolah now to really sink their teeth in this and get some serious work done. And uh, that's just brilliant because they listen to the player base, the people who are paying for it, essentially, and, and then they say, okay, that's what you want to see, we can do that. Uh, and just, there, are still a large, uh, there are still large numbers of people back in the day, you know, old fogies such as myself, who remember you know, the, those good old titles, you know, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Torment. And they just, they've said that they want to combine all those elements into a old school but new school RPG. So it would be isometric, that is, you know, looking down at the party. A lot of people like that. I enjoyed that. Uh, a lot of in-depth dialogue probably wouldn't be voiced, which, you know, is refreshing in a way. Everything's voiced these days. This way you have a lot more dialogue uh, choices. And some people, for example, with regards to Dragon Age, the transition from Dragon Age Origins to uh, Dragon Age uh, you know, 2 and, you know, vis-a-vis -vis Mass Effect, People miss that. In fact, I think one of the issues um, people had in Mass Effect 3, the uh, abominable failure, in my personal opinion, <laughs> single player, was the, the short and, and brief and uh, cut-off nature of the dialogue. You just didn't have a lot of options. And I think that sometimes is an inevitable consequence, A, of rushing games, and that, of course, that's one point, but also a consequence of cost. It's just not cost effective. I mean, you have to pay voice actors, whereas written dialogue is a lot easier. It's a lot easier on the wallet, and you can pump out a lot more. And just in terms of pure, pure purely in terms of options, and what, what you want to say, how you want to react, and so on and so forth. So I, for one, find that a very welcome, uh, not change, but differentiation from, from the current trend. And I think the voice stuff is great, depending on how well it's done, but um, this is definitely... Not 100 percent sure, but almost definitely going to be uh, a a dialogue based uh, RPG. Uh, completely new world as well, um, and with the resources they have and the dungeons, it looks really really nice. So the graphics are all going to be you know state of the art. It's it's PC, but it, it is going to be kind of loosely based on Infinity Engine principles, and you know Infinity Engine had some legendary games in it running on it. Um, Seriously in-depth, serious in-depth uh, themes and topics. I don't think it's going to be a save the world, or it might be. Um, but in addition to you know the standard fantasy stuff, you know, uh, <laughs> killing monsters or undead, and you know, getting gold and items, and that's all there, and you know, as well as magic. Um, I think it's going to be, from the sounds of it, a very personal. Uh, game as well. They tended to mention a, Torment a lot, and Torment, as you know, many of you, uh, Torment's not about saving the universe, it's about a journey of self-discovery, and uh, that that's something I just miss. I, I talked about that in Mass Effect, how amazing it would be to just have a journey, that's what I like to call a journey of self-discovery, as a, as, a, as a gaming principle, as a, as a driving principle behind um, behind a storyline, as opposed to you know, save the world, universe, galaxy, etc. I don't think it's going to be one of these. Um, it's it's going to be a much more personal uh, journey, from based on the descriptions of what we've heard so far. And um, it, it's all going to be based on these old school principles, but with new uh, new things integrated as well. And I, for one, uh, am uh, quite excited about this. Just because it's, it seems like a breath of fresh air. The whole concept of, of having a Kickstarter project uh, allows good developers like Obsidian to bypass the restrictions that would normally be placed on them by publishing companies such as, yes, you have to develop for, uh, for consoles as well. Uh, you know, by the way, I plan on doing a video at some point in time about my, my opinions on PC versus console, but uh, needless to say... Uh, this will be PC exclusive, and um, given the amount of donations and the uh, the fervor people have shown, I think a lot of people are going to buy it as well. I, I know I will, assuming all necessary variables. It just looks really, really promising for the kind of people who uh, just enjoy uh, that sort of game. I'm sure, it's going to have a lot of replay value. Uh, so. 
this is just as a principle, having developers funded by players, essentially, buyers, player base, just offers, I wouldn't say unlimited, but, but a, a, a vast array of possibilities that simply wouldn't exist under a traditional publisher that always will impose limitations and restrictions and say, no, 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 we can't have this and we can't have that and we want this and we want X, Y, Z and so on and so forth. I personally see the Kickstarter idea as a possibility to just really champion uh, PC gaming in general. The Kickstarter projects I'm aware of, and there are a few, none of them have anything to do with console, thank the gods. And we, we really have enough console shit out there. Every, everything is a console port these days. I don't want to talk too much about this, but, you know... Dark Souls was a console port to PC, and, and even you know Mass Effect was a console port to PC, and PC exclusive stuff is just becoming uh, an increased rarity in the gaming uh, world. Of course, there's still PC exclusive games, but they tend to be uh, pretty, uh, well, indie, if you will. And uh, but that's a topic of of. of wouldn't say vast, but rather large proportions, and you know, not a topic uh, to be fit in here. That said, uh, if you don't know about it, uh, check out. Uh, I'll be posting um, a link below. Check it out. See if it seems, in, it seems interesting to you. Maybe you want to donate. I'm not asking you to. I'm just saying maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Uh, very, very interesting project. I think they're really kind of only a quarter of the ways in right now. It's going to take a long time because these guys are thorough. I mean, Obsidian's going to develop this game over time, and they're going to take the time to invest uh, to develop the game properly. There's not going to be a rush, and that's what players want. Uh, they want a thorough, a thorough game, a thoroughly thought-out game with, uh, with all the details. So, yeah, I can, all I can say is that this is a game that I'm very much looking forward to because it's just it's running on a totally different principle, being funded by players, uh, not bypassing publishers, and just old school stuff, which is not everyone's shtick. I understand that, uh, but as an old timer myself, I have very fond memories of games like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale as a former Dungeons and Dragons player way back in the day, and uh, to hear uh, to hear something that something like this is being developed uh, really uh, warms my cackles. So. Um, all I can say is uh, check it out, uh, see what you can, you know, what you think about it based on the sparse information available. I think it's an excellent idea. Uh, there's some other mo Kickstarter projects I might uh, mention, but this one is the one that is most on my radar. How long it'll take? Only the gods know. Maybe 2015, 2016. Now, if we're all still alive by then, it should uh, make for a very, very entertaining, interesting RPG with all the really good elements from the past as well as uh, new ones. And uh, that's just not something you're going to find in the mainstream, not these days at least. So, you know, food for thought. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for your views and likes. And uh, I'll see you all uh, or talk or interact with you all uh, quite soon. Until then, may the gods watch over you and take care. Bye-bye.